Hey everybody, it's John Moore from Moore in the Morning, and I can't tell you where I am. I'm in a secret vault in a basement of a building somewhere in Toronto. Stored here are some 7,000 paintings. 140 of them are actually valued more than half a million bucks. Also stored here are all of the paper records from about 100 years of the Toronto District School Board. Which of course means that somewhere in these boxes are my parents' report cards. And a big majority of the legacy board materials. So come on in. So we'll just come in, and if you look down here on the, on the uh, skids, this is some uh, architectural ornamentation or decorative stonework, which comes out of the Lord Dufferin School. This had been a project that we'd partnered with with the city way back when, when the school had been uh, uh, renovated. Unfortunately, the plan changed with the new Regent Park revitalization, and the city didn't need this material. So they, they gave it back to us, and here we are with six tons of, of rock. But it's beautiful. It can't be incorporated into some of our other collections and so forth. So, so. So one I also want to point out that the significance of these works are not only of local or regional, but national significance. This is the largest um, school board collection in Canada. The one in the upper left that had the women with the sewing machines. Oh, yes. Do you know who that is? It looks like yes, a yes. Let me pull woman that copying Paul Peel or something. Absolutely. It's George Reed. And the reason it looks oh, like... Oh, it's Reed. Yeah, oh, but the yeah. reason it looks like um, Paul Peel is he's an important historical Canadian artist. And his uh, murals, if any of you went to, um, to Jarvis Collegiate, his murals are all around that stunning auditorium. And in the design exchange. And, and in the design Old exchange. He is an important yeah. Canadian artist. And he is, um, he is also a really uh, significant advocate for the Toronto District School Board and the collection. So he's one of those folks, him, Beatty, who would help to make sure that their friends would donate works, that the collectors would donate works to the board. And again, the intent was for education. Which one is the second car? That one over there? This is Emily Carr. Yeah. It's a smaller work, but this is a larger work. And this is the uh, George Reed. And what are the titles of the two of One of them is a, a landscape, and it's uh, the date is unknown on that particular one. This one as well is called um, Young Pines and Light. We don't have an exact date for this, but this would have been early 20th century. This is Emily Carr's work. Yes, yes, these two yeah. works are Emily Carr. We can also give you further details on the works when we return. We're trying to get everyone through quickly, so that's why I'm not trying to rush you. But I'm just going to show you a few of the works by the Group 7 as well. Back in the room, as I pointed out, there was a two, there were two sketches, important sketches by Tom Thompson and um, Carmichael. We now have here a work on the top by A.J. Casson, a fine example. A superb example. There are quite a few works by First Nations and Inuit artists in the collection, many that aren't even in this room here, but in other locations. And again, these are going to be wonderful tools for talking about everything from, of course, with Norval Morso, um, loss of cultural identity, land rights, etc. So this is an artist, of course, who, through, through the medium of uh, paint, sought to capture and recapture what he felt was a lost tradition, the loss of his language, his culture, and of course they were political statements. <laughs> Just let me know. Okay, this is the photographs. Yes. 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 Yes